so I think if like it came down to it of like someone asking like, Hey man, like I want to get better. Like, how did you get to where you are? You know, like those types of questions, I would give them the same advice that was given to me, uh, by Graham. Um, he said, get two or three of your homies. And I would say this to them, get two or three of your homies that are passionate about what you're doing, just like you are and shoot every day, shoot as much as you can get your reps in. Like, your mind will grow just like your body will if you go to the gym. But like you have to be consistent. Like you if you really really want this, you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose people in your life. You're going to make sacrifices. And I think not enough people actually like keep it that real and say that. But like there there's been plenty of shit in my life that I've lost because of this camera. Mm-hmm. There's been plenty of things that I've gained, but like at the end of the day that was like the best advice that I got like Get two or three of your friends. If you love what you do, go out and do it. If it's playing music, if it's being creative with a camera, if it's starting, playing sports, starting you know, a business or whatever. Yeah. Being a test champ, like whatever the hell it is you want to do, like you need accountability and like doing it alone is just tough. Mm-hmm. Like you can learn a lot from YouTube, but like real world scenarios are going to trump everything. If you want to hear about St. Louis, tune in to the Bucket List Show Weekly. Hear what Marissa and Luke say. It drops every Wednesday. Got a dope new guest every single week. Buckle up for the ride. Who's it going to be? Who's on the show today? They rep St. Louis. What to do in the loo on a late night or maybe what to do on a date night. Yeah. Bucket list has you covered, they know what's going on, what's going on, they'll give you, hey, 18 different things to do, or 19 if you need one more to choose, yeah, the city, city, city is a place we call home, a place we call home, yeah. What's up, St. Louis? It's your host, Luke Farrell of the STL Bucket List Show. My wife, Marissa Farrell, is not here today. She's out um, getting those midterms in, midterms in for her students, um, saving saving the lives of kids uh, at a high school teacher. So um, shout out teachers and, uh, you know, shout out Half Coast Studios in the back. Matt on the ones and twos, cutting up a perfect episode every week that we can put out on Google, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, every single platform. Um, so we can keep bringing uh, St. Louis love to the airways. And then uh, my friends over at Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis, the largest public funder of arts and arts programs in the city. Um, They're a large presenting sponsor of our show, and we're going to continue that because we just love to support local art. Um, And speaking of local art, um, we have creator, uh, photographer, um, artist, entrepreneur in the studio today. We got Larry Bomarito, otherwise known as Second Try. Thanks for coming in today, man. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Yeah, you can call me whatever. (laughs) Secantry. Yeah, I kind of do it all. (laughs) Professional sleeper, professional napper. (laughs) professional lazy i'm probably like the laziest most energetic person it's a very very weird dichotomy explain that to me because i've I've heard a lot of people say that so like whenever i'm lazy and not doing anything i'm like not doing anything turn the phone on airplane mode like disconnect fully but when i'm going it's like a thousand miles per hour yeah and it's like manic I'm just like, go, 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 go. Do you go. think that that helps? Like, ha- like, I feel like every successful, like freelance entrepreneur, like same thing, freelance entrepreneur, but like every successful entrepreneur is like hyper obsessed with what they're doing at that exact moment. Um, I think you have to be in a way like you have to fixate on it. Like yeah. if you want to grow and create more and like actually push yourself, yeah. like you, you have to fixate on it. Yeah. Cause like, if you don't, if you don't, then like, what are you really doing? Right. And, and, and you don't like, you're not going to get better, but then also like the best people, the most successful people are always obsessed. And then the, like you're, they're not out there in the snow. They're not out there at the fires. They're not out there at three in the morning, climbing on shit and doing all that stuff. Like, right. You're just different. I, um, I would say that like, there's just a time and place for everything too. Like there's been, I mean, I've been walked around miles and miles of the city mm-hmm. and I'm like, I've, I would like to say I've seen a lot of it, but I mean, there's still stuff I haven't seen, mm-hmm. but I mean, I pick and choose my battles now. Like there was definitely a time where I was like, nonstop, have to go get it, had FOMO, all that stuff. And now I'm like a little more strategic with what I'm doing. I a little more, a little more planned, a little more, um, sticky notes, writing down shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I, I have my sticky notes on the fridge and you know, I, I have my checklist of things I do a day. So, yeah. well, Hey man, that, that's, that's what it's about. So on our podcast, cool thing about it is we like to kind of go back in the day. Um, a lot of people don't get that opportunity to kind of talk about their childhood, talk about, um, where they're from, you know, stuff like that. So if you could go back to before second try, way before second try, you know, Larry, Larry Bomarito, like tell us where you're from. Tell us about your family. Tell us about your upbringing. Just kind of go in deep about, uh, about that. Uh, so I grew up in Delwood, Missouri, North County area, uh, right next to like Ferguson. 
Uh, I went to Riverview Gardens High School. I dropped out actually my junior year. School was not in the cards for me. Um, I have an older brother. He's five years older than me. Uh, my parents are still together, happily married. Um, I didn't really have like a crazy childhood. Like I just played with like neighborhood kids and like it was obviously before like cell phones were around. Like I'm going to be 34 next month. So like no prehistoric I, times, <laughs> I actually like enjoyed being outside and like getting stitches and like, yeah, I never broke a bone or nothing like that. But, um, no, like my childhood was pretty good. Like poor family. Like we didn't have a lot, but, um, I appreciated what we had, mm-hmm. you know, it was, it was a pretty simple life. Like me and my brother got along great. Never had any issues like with family at home. So it was, just it, was you four. it was just you four. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, um, it's crazy. So like my, we grew up in like a 800 square foot house with like one bathroom, two bedroom. Right. Me and my brother had bunk beds. Like we didn't have a lot. Mm-hmm. And, um, <clears throat> so like my place downtown right now is like 300 square feet bigger than the childhood home I grew up in. Right. So it's just like crazy to me some days to like let that sink in. And even like my parents are like, oh, we're so proud of you. And I'm like, yeah, you guys didn't think I was going to do anything. <laughs> yeah. When you so let, let's out. be honest, you know, tell us about that moment. Like why, why, why did you drop out? Uh, so, um, when I was going to Riverview, they had lost their accreditation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't really see like a point to like keep going. Like once we lost our accreditation, I couldn't transfer schools because of where I lived. I was like, well, I guess I need to just like drop out and start making money. So like, yeah. That's what I did. My parents were just like, you're an adult now. Like if you are old enough to drop out, like you're old enough to make your decisions. Yeah. You were so, 17 at this time. Uh, yeah. Like 16, 17. Yeah. It was like right around right before I turned 17. So yeah, junior year, um, like 2006. Oh, wow. Okay. So they're like, yeah, I mean, if you drop out, like you got to go get a job, like at least like work, you're not going to live here rent free, you know? Absolutely. So that's what I did. I became a mechanic. Uh, I got paid like $400 under the table every week. And I was like, 16, I was like, man, I'm like making it. Yeah, like, your friends are like, great. you got so much money, dude. <laughs> yeah, like I I was playing drums at the time. Like I played music when I was younger. I skateboarded. So like I had like extracurricular things. Like I played baseball growing up. Mm-hmm. And then um, I just like kind of started finding myself. Mm-hmm. I was in like a straight edge band for like a long time. Like I was like playing drums, like driving out to O'Fallon mm-hmm. every weekend, staying out there. Just like. Things that, like, nobody really knows. Right. Like O'Fallon, Missouri. Yeah, O'Fallon, Missouri. Yeah, that's where I'm from. So, so like, I was driving <laughs> out to O'Fallon, like, Highway K, like, yeah. you know, back in 06, like, where it was still kind of, like, farmland. It wasn't, like, really overdeveloped like it is now. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, yes, yeah, so, like, that's how I would spend my, we- my weekends. I would work during the week, and I lived that a pretty simple. That was where band was, or, like, where you guys practiced at? Yep. My parents would not let us practice at the house because I had anger problems and I hit the gr- drums too hard. Well, in an 800 square foot house, I mean, you're blowing up the whole entire house. At oh, point. my neighbors would hear me across the street. Yeah. Like they would call my parents and be like, hey, will you tell your son to shut up? We can hear him. You went He's, to O'Fallon, like houses he, are spread out a little bit more. He's shaking the house across <laughs> yeah. the street. And like I would hit hard. Like I cracked cymbals all the time. I like broke drum heads. Like I had like severe anger issues and I didn't realize it until I started playing music. <laughs> and then you're like, wow, I had like something's it's wrong like, with wow. me. I was like, man, I... And now I'm like super stressed and have like crazy anxiety now these days. I'm like, I probably need to start playing drums again. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it is. And like, and, and uh, do you think that like the drums, the camera is what drums used to be for you at that time? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's like my, my interest and hobbies shifted from like skateboarding to music to a camera now. Yeah. So it's like, it always, my attention always goes from like one thing or to the other. Absolutely. And I always told myself too, like if there ever comes a time in my life where I'm like, I'm done with photos. Like I don't feel creative anymore. Like I'll put it down and start something new. Right. I have like no problem with that. Like I'm not scared to like wake up one day and be like, well, I'm just not into it no more. Yeah. I mean, you always have it. Same with music. Like you can always pick it back up, but like if it doesn't interest you anymore, then it's like, if it doesn't excite you, that's what it is. Like we are like living this life of like, we're just trying to be excited about something. Right. And you mentioned anxiety. It's like, I need something that gives me something to be creative or an outlet to do yeah, something to like, create. Like right now, these days, a camera helps me get out of bed. Mm-hmm. And gives me like a purpose to be like, oh, I should probably go do something today. Right. Like I have this talent. I have this, I have great gear. Like I have like everything I could want when I first started. And I'm like, now I'm like, well, okay, I should actually probably like put it to good use. Absolutely. So like I have like, um, I like to hold myself accountable to it. You know, mm-hmm. like I've worked hard to get to where I am now. And like, it's still only the beginning for me, mm-hmm. like in my head. So I'm like, okay, well, like. If I don't wake up every day and like go after it, then like someone else is going to be going after it. 
Absolutely. I always have that same feeling. It's like, if I'm not working, somebody's out working me and, oh, yeah. and it's with anything like, and, and I'm not a photographer, but like uh, entrepreneurs are creators too. Like we have to create the life that we want. Um, and that's, what's inspiring about it. And like, just seeing your work, like I had met you a couple times. We, we, I went to your house yesterday. That was the first time we actually really talked for a long time, but I noticed that you're, you're kind of, you know, reserved to your craft. Like you don't have to show everybody, you don't have everybody to see, but I wanted to kind of take it back to when you started because you didn't start taking photos in 2006 when you dropped out, like, you know, no. so what um, year did you start taking photos? So I started roughly around like 2016, 2017, like I don't really exactly remember the time, but it was like around that time frame. Um, so you're still just getting started at this point. It's only been five, six years. Yeah. And like, and I'm still like, I'm still learning stuff daily. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't think I'll ever, well, I don't think I'll ever obviously stop learning, but I haven't been doing it that long. Like in perspective to like some people, right? Like I know for a fact, like Joan, Mm -hmm. for instance, you know, or like Mike or all these people that like I'm around in my circle, they've been shooting for eight, nine, 10 years. Right. So like, I still feel like a newbie, honestly, (laughs) which is kind of crazy, but. So why'd you pick up a camera then? Uh, Did you get one? Like, were you just, were you interested in like. No. So I had no interest at all. I never thought like. I had an iPhone obviously and like I would take photos, Mm -hmm. but, um, I had a really bad breakup in like 2016, 2017 and I needed an outlet. I needed a, an escape. I needed a way to take my mind off of it. And, um, she had bought me a GoPro the Christmas before it just sat in my closet. Didn't use it. Didn't think anything about it. Um, after all that was over and happened, um, I had basically cleaned out my room one day, found it in a drawer had an Instagram already. Cause I was like posting like cloud porn and like what we were eating every day, you know, like just like how like 2000, the fun part of Instagram when like, it yeah, was like, like 2015, with 2016 Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> put your, put your hue all the way up and like just yeah. call it a day or yeah. whatever the, the Lux. Yeah. The Lux. The yeah. Lux just just filter. crank your Lux all the way up <laughs> yeah. and call it a day. Get like, orange. Yeah. Great. Get 20 <laughs> likes and you know, yeah. success. So I basically took out that GoPro one day and started shooting at cement land. Cause like I grew up in North County. So like pretty close to it, posted them on Instagram and like got some good responses. And I was like, huh, I actually like didn't think about how shitty my life has been in the last three months. This might be something. Right. And I just kind of stuck with it. That's crazy. So a GoPro, a GoPro, a hero Four silver. It was a touchscreen. Yeah. And, uh, I remember like turning it instead of like turning it, you know, vertical or horizontally, I would turn it vertically. So it fit better with the IG mm-hmm. format. And I was just like, oh, well, had a wide angle lens already. So I was like shooting vacant buildings going on on rooftops, like looked cool already to it. Yeah. So you'd be running around with a GoPro. Like, did you ever run into like other <laughs> photographers? Like, they're like, what are you doing, dude? Oh, I had people like laugh at me. Like literally like I had one person tell me I had shitty composition one time. I was like, okay, well, that'll never happen again. Uh, like I, I took offense to a lot of stuff. Like I took it personal. I was like, okay, cool. You guys want to laugh now? Yeah. I'll make sure you don't laugh again. And like then, that was like my, I had a chip on my shoulder. Well, absolutely. And like, and that's what you said, you know, yesterday is like, you're like, it doesn't matter what camera you have. Like, I mean, I have the a seven two, but like, I've also shot on my mom's Cannon. That's so old, like 15 oh, years yeah. old. And I've made great pictures. I've took great pictures on this and yeah. with the right, you know, with the right shot. Um, so like, it's just funny, like jumping around on buildings and then you like whip out like this little GoPro. Oh my God. I had like a huge backpack, <laughs> like everything. And then they're like, all right, oh bro, like what kind of camera you got? And I was just like, it's right here. <laughs> and like, that's it. Like, it's just like this little baby, yeah, little baby thing. And like in my hands, like it just like would fit. Yeah. And I'd be like, this is it. And you were taking dope pictures with that. So like how long I was, you- I was editing JPEG photos, 12 megapixel JPEG photos. I was editing those and then making prints off of them. Damn. Like that's the two cool. prints in my, yeah. my, uh, kitchen. Yeah. Those were sick though. And like, they still look good. Yeah. I, and they I even think it well. I mean, we, we didn't blow them up too big, but like they even printed well. And, and that's what I'm saying. It, like, it doesn't matter about the gear, but like there was a point where you're like, okay, I'm looking at other people. I'm looking at other people's photos and I'm getting jealous that I'm not able to take that photo because I don't have the gear. Um, did you have money where you make, you weren't making money? You obviously um, weren't going to a client shoot with the GoPro. <laughs> no. So like the very, actually uh crazy story too. My very first, my very first ever paid photo gig was for Acura. Damn. Uh, it wasn't, Yeah, it was for a local dealership here in St. Louis. It wasn't like Acura, Acura. It was like a local dealership and they brought like three cars out to the city for me to like, uh, it was like Acura TLs. Like at the time they were like brand new off the floor and I had to borrow my buddy Zach days 
Canon 6D. And I did, had no idea what I was doing. He like gave me like a quick rundown of like, oh, like you shoot manual. Like this is how you do it. Yeah. You'll figure it out. Good luck. <laughs> I shot those photos and made $150. And I was like, I'm rich. Oh, I was yeah. like, this is great. I just made money off of doing something I like. Right. I was like, th- my mind was blown. <laughs> and like knowing what I know and I was like, God, I should have charged so much more. Like I'll never do cars again. Like I know that for a fact that like from that day, I was like, I don't ever want to shoot cars. <laughs> like I just knew because of the experience you had or just, yeah, I was just like, this is just like, it was not fun. Like it was cool. Mm-hmm. But like, it was like, I'll never do this again. But it was also cool to get paid because there's something special about making money. Like you've worked jobs, you mechanic, all these other jobs, like you've made money, but like, I'd rather make $1 like with my talents than I would make like a thousand dollars, like oh, ch- make it, checking a clock. You know? Hands down. I mean, and even still to this day, like, it's crazy to me that like people pay me to like do what I do for yeah. like fun. And a lot of more, a lot more money than they used to pay. Yeah. For. And I'm like, it, it, it's just absolutely mind boggling to me. Like even still. Yeah. And like, I'm like, okay, like, what is it going to be five years from now? Like, what is it going to be 10 years from now? Well, then you can start picking and choosing and you're already kind of getting to that point where you can pick and choose your projects, but sometimes you have to kind of eat it and like do projects you don't want to do at some points, but like, you know, yeah, I mean, still we, taking pictures with the, you're still getting we, paid to shoot. I think creatives, like as a creative, we kind of sell our soul to the devil a little bit and like we do pick and choose our battles, but like there are some battles that we just have to do. Like we just have to you have to bite the bullet. Sometimes you have to play nice. Absolutely. As I call it, you know, you you have to, at the end of the day, you have to shake the hands, kiss the babies. You have to like, just do what is right. Even if you don't like it. Do you feel like creatives? Um, and I, I I know this with anybody, like everybody's prideful, but I feel like creatives have a certain level of pride that other people don't have. And I I don't know how to put words to that, but like, Um, it's like, they're almost like, not like they're not, you could probably explain it, but like you guys are prideful about your work, obviously. But Oh yeah. I mean, like it's, it's something that I'm creating, you know, even if I walk into a room and 10 photographers take a photo before me, it's the same photo. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that mine stands out. Like there is like some pride to it. You know, Absolutely. it's like, it's with video work, with artists, with graffiti writers, with anything, you know, it's like, you want to be the best in the room, no matter what. And like, you could say it's ego, you could say it's whatever, but like, you want to be the best right. or like, I want to be the best or I wouldn't be doing it. Now, not every day I'm the best, but I would like to say that most times if I'm going to be in the room, like I want to try to be at least do the best that I can do. Right. Not even like be the best, like in the room, but like at least know that like when I step into a room, I'm going to give it 110%. Absolutely. With whatever I'm doing. So it's like, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of pride, like, um, to have that going. But yeah, I wanted to go back to the camera. So like you, you had the GoPro and then you borrowed Zach's camera, which is dope because then you're like, okay, like I need this. Like, how did you fund your first camera? How did you like find it? Why, why did you like, what, what was the, like, how long did it take you to go from the GoPro to the camera? Um, so I had had a GoPro for probably a year. Wow. And then, um, I'd actually, <laughs> and it's funny too, cause I bought it from, or she got it from Best Buy. Mm-hmm. And so like Best Buy's warranty, like it's still like crazy, right? Like yeah, oh, you can just smash something in Best Buy after you buy it in the back. Oh, cool. Here's another one. Yeah. So like I was purposely, I was so petty. I purposely wanted like a brand new camera all the time. Mm -hmm. So like I was purposely shooting with a GoPro for like a month and just like smashing it and like taking the pieces back to Best Buy and be like, I want a new one. And they would do it. And they did it. They did it like 12 times. Damn. I got like 12 GoPros brand new, like over the course of like a year. I literally got a new GoPro every month from there. Like, wow, you just wanted one? Like, yeah, just I, was just, I was just being petty. I was just yeah. like, oh, like I just want a new GoPro. Like, yeah. oh, this one got a scratch on it. Uh, just smash. I'll go get a new one. You know, I'm like super like yeah. OCD about it. Like, I mean, you see my place, like how clean it is. Like, yeah. you need everything to be perfect. Yes. I'm like a, I'm a control freak. So I was right. like, oh, like. No, this GoPro sucks now. Trash. Smash it. Go to Best Buy the next day. <laughs> yeah. So I did that for like a year. Yeah. And then um and then I actually bought uh my first DSLR. I got a Canon uh 5D, the original 5D. Mm-hmm. And um I got a kit lens with it. And I basically booked a trip. I had like never been on a plane before. Never flown until really? I was twenty seven. Damn. And then I went to Philly, Denver, and Memphis all alone. Just to shoot. Just to shoot. And like meet up with people like that I met on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Took this camera that I had no idea about 
completely wrong focal length for whatever I was trying to do. I had no idea. And I was just like, I'm just going to make it work. And then that was kind of like it, like that just led from like the 5d to like the 5d Mark two, which I loved. Like, I still love that camera to a 5d Mark three to a 5d Mark four to the one DX Mark three. So like, I just kind of like kept working your way up. Yeah. And like, and I bought it from, I got the Canon 5d off of Amazon for like 400 bucks. It was like still used. Sell those? They still sell those? Or no? Oh, I mean, you could probably find one, but like they're compared Ancient. to like what we have nowadays. Yeah. It's, it's a true dinosaur. Can you shoot mirrorless now or is that? Is no, that this like, is full frame. Oh, this full so frame. yeah, this is still full frame. I don't want to switch to mirrorless. Yeah. I'm old school, I guess. <laughs> You're old school, man. These kids these days, they all want mirrorless. <laughs> man, I feel you. But so when you went to that trip, um, like obviously street photography was a calling t- towards you. And I don't know if that has anything to do with like where you grew up at or your music or anything like that. But is there something about like, would you say you're a street photographer? Like, what is your title? Um, honestly, at the end of the day, I think I just call myself like a photographer. I don't right. think I like have like a label or Category. a title. Like yeah. I can kind of shoot whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I've done nightclub photography. I've done food. I've done product. I've done people. I've done places. I've done architecture. I've done branding. I've kind of done everything. So I'm just like, I'm just a photographer. Right. And honestly, there's like a little bit of me still where I'm just like a dude with a camera. Mm-hmm. Like I wouldn't even consider myself like a photographer. Yeah. Like I'm just a dude that goes out and just takes photos. Right. I just happen to do it for a living. Yeah. And it's uh, it's something special about doing it for a living. So how how long did it take you to like really go full in where you're like, this is my job? Like, was there a day you quit your job or you, um, did you just work kind of odd jobs and like just different things? So I had worked for, let's see. So I've worked for Creepcore camera before they closed up. I worked like in the media department for first form, uh, here in St. Louis. First form. Um, I worked for the Cardinals for a few years, um, but first form was the last actual job that I had before I became full-time freelance. And then I started doing nightclub photography full-time at like Ember mm-hmm. with like DJ Murph and all them. Yeah. And then I'd bounce back and forth between like wheelhouse and stuff. Okay. So that's kind of like when I was like making good money on the weekends, I was making like, I mean, I was making five, 600 bucks a weekend for taking photos for an hour. I was like, okay, cool. Like money's good. Yeah, like this nice. is like study and I have all week to kind of do whatever I wanted to do creatively. Yeah. But then I got put on salary and then it got even better. And I was just like, all right, cool. I like, that's like when I started feeling like, okay, like stress is kind of going away. Mm-hmm. Bank accounts going up. Creative juices are flowing. I have like time and I have like time to think mm-hmm. space to like reflect on things. It was great. And you could do other client work during the week if you really wanted to. Yep. Um, and then COVID hit. Oh, COVID. <laughs> yeah. And then boom, COVID. <laughs> yeah, because you were working at, because uh, I, I did like some media work, just like social media work for Ember. And I remember you were working, but then you had stopped and then they sent me a bunch of photos to use. And I was like using your photos or something. Yeah. And they didn't yeah, have so anybody. Like, I'm so like, hey, they, we need some new content. And they're like, oh, we don't have any So content. they were using like Drive social media here in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And then Drive was like, yeah, you don't really need us. Like your photographer is doing really, really well. Like. You can save all this money if you just use his stuff. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> right. So it was like kind of like pointless for us to have drive. Yeah. It's like same situation. Like we're just like giving our photos, my photos to like. Another marketing company. Right. And, and, I, they're was, just and I was using like, oh, them. this is perfect. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll just schedule all these out and I'm good. Like, uh, yeah, I exactly. I was anything. making everybody else's job easier and not getting paid for it. I was like, well, this sucks. <laughs> I was like, well, uh, you yeah. live and you learn. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like nightclub photography, but, um, that the street photography is like what calls us to you is like, we, we've shared all your stuff all the time, but like, I just love like getting up like the buildings and all like the stuff that you do. I mean, like you always have been doing that though. Like you always are like, I want to get angles. Like I want to like, um, yeah, I always wanted unique perspectives. It actually, um, it actually really stems from, I always actually wanted to be a graffiti artist. Like I wanted to do graffiti. Are you artistic? Can you draw? No. I was <laughs> just like, like, I just want to be that type of I was of like, I want to be like, I want to speak my mind freely. I, I needed like an outlet to like express myself. And I was like, oh, like graffiti, like there's no rules. I can do it wherever I can steal paint. This would be great. Like it's a, it's a zero cost, yeah. high reward, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, tried it for like two weeks. Sucked. I was <laughs> like, well, this, I was like, well, never mind. Yeah. And then I was still taking photos and um, at the same time. And I was like, I was always intrigued by how they were getting, how graffiti writers and like taggers were getting to these high locations Mm -hmm. and tagging like billboards and rooftops. And I was like, how are they getting up there? And that's what sparked my interest originally with like, oh, I'll figure it out and take my camera with me and show those perspectives. That's how it all started. Yeah. Like before rooftopping, like before I knew that rooftopping was a thing, I was completely clueless. I was just like, oh, like there's, there's probably no one else doing this. 
I mean, there wasn't. I mean, there was probably a few guys. That I mean, there no. I mean, like rooftopping's been rooftopping's been going on for decades, like right. in a general sense, but maybe like not in St. Louis. Yeah, like there was like maybe a few people doing it, but not really like showcasing it. And then when you were taking those pictures, like were people like you know asking you like locations, and then like probably you were probably getting in trouble too. <clears throat> um, I would imagine. I mean, did you ever get arrested or anything up there? So I've never been caught physically. I've well, I've, okay. So I've been detained once in Kansas City. Okay. But that wasn't even for like anything bad. I was like actually on a rooftop with access and the message just didn't get relayed to one person to another. And like a SWAT team came up. Oh, so you got permission to be on this one. Like, yeah. Like we shot. had like a key, everything. Like we went up, unlocked it, everything. And like, we we're chilling over a flow rider concert. <laughs> and I was like, I'll never get arrested for flow rider again. <laughs> right. But like we, uh, we got like detained, they booked us and like we bailed out like two hours later. So that's like been the extent. But in St. Louis, you've never really been caught. No, I've I've spent more time breaking into prisons than I've actually been like actually locked up. In breaking one. into vacant prisons. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's kind of interesting. Like any close calls? Because I I think when Mike was on here, he said he had like one or two like crazy close calls. Oh like, yeah, Mike's definitely seen more than me. But I mean, I've had uh, what was it? The old St. Mary's in, Infirmary. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so many crazy stories about that place. But um, there was a dude on the top floor. Mike will probably know this story too, but um, there was a dude on the top floor that was living, a homeless guy. And like, it was one of those doors where it's like a cutout for the glass, but like the whole thing was like wood. It's mm-hmm. like, you could like look through the top and it was busted out. And this dude was in a room like this with like blankets everywhere. And like, you couldn't tell, like he like hung blankets from the ceiling and everything, like made like a little like room or Had whatever. A nice little house, like a nice little home he made for himself. Yeah, he was chilling in there. And uh, my buddy Ryan, Hopped through the door. He crawled up through the window because the door was locked. Mm-hmm. Crawled up through the window and all of a sudden he jumps down and lands and like hits on the ground. And this dude opens up the curtain in the room and he has a buoy knife in his mouth. And he's just like literally about to attack Ryan. Right. I've never Breaking seen a person. House. I've never seen. And, and Ryan's a short person too. He's like 5'8", five, 5'7". Mm-hmm. Five, I've never seen a short person hop so high in my life. And run out of a place. Damn. This dude chased us out of there. Like you guys were just booking back. Oh my God. Cameras. I was terrified. I was like, this dude's going to cut us. This dude's going to kill us. That's crazy. But like, I mean, weird stuff happens all the time. Yeah. Like I live in, I live downtown. So like I see crazy stuff all the time and I'm so desensitized to it now. Yeah. Like I've never like, I've never had like a bad run in, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Never had like a gun pulled on me. I've never like right. had anyone come up to me. Like I'm a, sort of like a big guy anyway. So, I mean, like someone would really have to, I think either be ballsy or just like not care. Right. And like you have cameras, but like cameras could like, you just never know. Like, like you said, you broke You basically broke into this guy's home and he was just like, what's going on? Like he could have thought it was somebody that he ran into a week ago or whatever. So I've, I've like adapted and kind of like learned because I explore a lot by myself right now. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are busy that I used to shoot with or like people have moved away. So like I do a lot of stuff solo these days. Right. So I'm very, very aware and conscious of my, like my surroundings at all times. Like I always like go into buildings and like make a lot of noise and like basically let other people know that I'm there. Right. Before you start, you're like, so like, I don't spook somebody. Cause that's like when you're going to get in trouble. Like when you scare somebody. Absolutely. Like if someone came randomly, if you woke up at two o'clock in the morning to go pee and there's a dude walking through your house, he'd be like, you'd freak out too. Right. So, I mean, same perspective. Yeah. Like it's just in a different area. Yeah. And it's in these guys. And yeah. It's just a whole different lifestyle. And, uh, you know, the street photography is just like crazy because like sometimes like you guys will like, have you ever been like a guy that like got like portraits of people, like random people, or is that not really your style? Like- um, so I don't like getting in people's personal space. Yeah. Like, cause I don't like people getting in my personal space. Like coming up and taking a picture of somebody. Like, Yeah. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Like, and like, it's funny. Cause like, I know exactly what they're doing, right. but like, it would just be like the... But as somebody that doesn't know, it's like, why are you taking pictures? Like they're at a vulnerable state or they're like yeah. sprawled out on the ground. Like if I really like want to, I do it a lot in New York when I travel there, yeah. but like, that's just because nobody in New York gives a shit. Yeah, Cause they got other stuff to worry about. Like, they're literally like a thousand miles per hour. They literally could care less about what you're doing. People shit in the middle of the streets. Right. And they just like walk past them, like walk over them. Yeah. So like, but also I've kind of come down with like a, um, I wouldn't say like I'm timid, but. There is like some times where I like, I feel uncomfortable taking a photo, but that like makes me know that I'm probably doing the right thing mm-hmm. to like go against like your fight or flight. Right. Like when you feel that, like, you know, you're in the right spot doing the right thing. Taking a photo. Like when you feel some tension. Yeah. Well, tell us about something like that, like a photo that you. Um, so like 
me, me, Mike, and like Matt, and like you know, kind of like all the homies that we used to do stuff with, like during the 2017 like Stockley verdict, yep. like during the protest, mm-hmm. like we were at the front line the whole time, getting pepper sprayed, maced. Mm-hmm. We didn't give a fuck. <laughs> we were like media you knew people. That these pictures needed to be captured. We were we were getting in front of media people. Like we don't care who you are. CNN, great, you can go fuck off. Like right. we live here. <laughs> Like we're gonna get our shit. Yeah. Like we're gonna get our shots. Were they like they had the news people and they're like, hey, can you move out? Like, yeah, we're just like them. I remember and you're just like this. I remember Mike literally screen. looking at you, looking at a person, and be like, who the fuck are you? Who cares? And <laughs> just like us, just like going about our business. That's crazy. Like I have a photo of, of mine and Mike. Or I have a photo of Mike's in my house, uh, and there's like an actual. You can link it up on a YouTube video of like the overhead chopper of like of like the live stream. And like you can frame. see like him taking that photo that I have and it's like so sick. Yeah. It's I think crazy. I know exactly the one you're talking about, like all yeah. the shields and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's so sick. Like stuff so, like that, man. It's just like when you think of photography, you don't think of doing stuff like that. You think no, of going I mean, to like, a white box studio and like setting stuff on a thing. The, and the thing that kind of a few of us are doing, like even like in the culture as a whole, like we are kind of like risking a lot of stuff. And like, sometimes it's really, really dumb and there's not like a, like much reward just to say like that we did it. That's all it is at that point. Like you're not getting paid. At yeah. Like listening. it's just like, it's a true expression of ourselves mm-hmm. of like, we have these photos. There are to keep nobody can, nobody will have these moments. You know, like you're literally like locking a millisecond in time forever. Yeah. Like it's a very powerful thing. Yeah. It's a good way to look. If at it's it. good or bad, because Good and bad shit must be showcased. And a lot of time, the bad stuff is like that. Like those pictures are going to be in history books, but they're not going to be as cool as the ones you guys took. They're going to be the the ones that. Oh yeah, they're going to be the ones we tell stories about. Like when yeah. we're like, be like, oh, I took that same picture except way better. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't say way better, but yeah, it's it's definitely like um, there's a time and a place for everything. And like I think whenever, like whenever all the protests were happening, I mean, we were just like we were so hungry for it. We're like, God, like. This is something different to shoot. So you guys all met up and like, we're like, we're going. Oh yeah. We're like, we're going to be in a group. We're not going to get split up. Like we're going to like do the buddy system and like do this right. So you weren't shooting during Ferguson cause that was 2014. So you weren't yeah. even shooting. And that's like right there by your hometown. Yeah. So I was working for the Cardinals actually. That was my very first year. It was 2013 or was it 14? <sighs> I think it was 14 cause I was a senior in high school. I, I should know. Two, yeah. I think 2014. I think I was a um, senior in high school. Well, it could have been like 2013 over two. It could have been like multiple I don't, I don't know. I think, I mean, it lasted a long time yeah. and like, um, but like Mike and all them like were shooting yeah. back then and like the stuff that they got, you know, Crazy. I was just like, I wish I would have started earlier. You know, like that's like, just like the infamous, like, God, I wish I would have started earlier. I wish I would have done this before, you know, it's like, but now that I'm doing it, I really try to make the most of it every day. So you really didn't like have a real camera and like the GoPro is like that shooting, but you didn't have a real camera until you're 20. So like my age is 27. So basically you got your first camera like at my age right now. And yeah, I figured it out. Later. Like I didn't watch YouTube. Like it was me, Zach Day and, uh, and Scott, my buddy Scott. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we would go out. We were like the three amigos. Like we literally like would go out every day. If one of us didn't feel like shooting, the other two would go up to her, go over to his house and Pick get him, him yeah. and be like, you're going to shoot. <laughs> like, we're going to hold each other accountable. Yeah. And like, um, it was just like, instead of one of us making a mistake and learning from ourselves, three of us were making mistakes and learning three times faster. And it just excelled us. Right. And then like, obviously things went, we started growing apart. Obviously interests changed, girlfriends work life, all that stuff. And then I kind of just stuck with it. Kept doing it. And yeah. like those guys still work, but like they're mostly doing like other, like other stuff at this point. Or um, I think Scott has a full-time job. He's pretty locked down with his girly. And then um, Zach moved to Nashville to like kind of pursue different things yeah. like with photography. So right. like, he's like, he moved. Yeah. And people ask me all the time, like, why haven't you moved out of St. Louis? And I'm like, well, I kind of like feel like I still have a lot of stuff to do here. Right like a lot of untapped potential and I'm just kind of like waiting, you know how it is. It's like never about what you know, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. So like if you get put in front of the right people, yeah, you can get the right opportunities. Oh, 100%. And St. Louis is completely a city like that. Yeah. So I'm like, 
and we're starting to get plugged into that finally. But like, we're still at the point with us, like STL bucket list. People think we're like Fox two or seeing like, we're not a news, like we're not the news. Right. We're not funded. We don't have budgets. We do all this. Like this is all self-funded. Everything that we are doing is right. because we want to, I want to express myself. Like I could have my business, my marketing company, and I could be off at home right now, but I'm doing this because this is exciting and I like doing it. I like creating a product. So one day I'm going to look back on these episodes. So we've done 41. We're going to keep doing them. But like That's when I'm 60, I'm going to look back at conversations I had with you, with Nikki, with all these people, Joe Edwards, with Kevin Limp, with uh, Matt Curran, like all these different episodes we yeah. had, Jason Bachman, like nobody can take that episode away. We have the files. We have all that stuff. Exactly. And like, that's the same way I look at like Instagram, yeah. like people hate on Instagram and I'm like, Instagram to me now, it's just a personal, uh, personal journal. Mm-hmm. I, I like speak my mind the way I want. I post what I want to. Like on there, curate I curate what you like. You you take stuff away that you don't want people to see. Like yeah, I just, mean, you saw my archives. Like yeah. I have like thousands of archives that like I, I just, know some fire shit too. We need I, to release I, those. I just take down because like I just don't like it. Yeah, you know, like I've got over the course of the years I've been shooting, I've probably taken over two hundred thousand photos. Yeah. I only have like fourteen hundred posted on my Instagram. Right. We have a lot of like new stuff. Like you, you, you said that, you know, as of late, you're just like, it's more for you. It's not like it, you, there used to be a time where you were posting for other people. I'm sure just like everybody, that's the reason it's social. That's why it's called social media. Yeah. I was trying to, I was trying to play the game. I was trying to be like, Oh, maybe like if the right person sees this, I'll get a gig. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, I don't care. Like right. if you want to work with me, great, cool. I'll work with you. If you don't, then right. just like, even like with my Instagram, like if you don't like what I'm posting, don't look right. I have no problem with that. Right. You can follow me. You can block me. I don't care. Like some of the shit that I post isn't for everybody. It's not supposed to be. Yeah. It's for me. No, that's, that's 100%. And like you said, it's a journal. That's a good way to look at it. And the way I look at it, I tell this to everybody, whoever listens to this every week knows this, but like you have, you know, 20,000, 19.9, whatever, how many followers you have, but 20,000 people granted, like some of your friends and like not competitors, but like some of the people you look up, look up to have hundreds of thousands, but like 20,000, you know, the new soccer stadium, that would fill up the whole stadium. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a crazy it's a lot perspective. Of That's a lot of people, but it doesn't seem like that because it's not moving or it's not going up or whatever. Right. I mean, to me, it's just a number on an app. Like I, yeah. I could have a hundred thousand followers. I could have one follower, you know? Yeah. It's at the end of the day, to me, it's who actually fucks with me and who really supports me. Right. Like if I have a hundred of those 19,000 followers that really are ride or die for me, which is, which is the reality. That's, that's like the reality with that's anything. totally fine. Yeah. Like I'm completely okay with that. If Instagram went away tomorrow, I would still take this camera with me everywhere I go. Every time I leave my house, mm-hmm. when I go to the gas station, I put my camera in my car Yeah. and the gas station is five minutes away. Just in case you never know. Yeah. Like shit can pop off at any time. Well, I think that's important. Like, and that, that's what I think the difference is between most, most photographers is like, if you're a photographer and you don't have your camera, you're not shooting every single day. It's just like basketball. It's just like just like work, like working out. Like if you're not working at it, like you could work out for 20 years and stop for two years and lose all that progress. Yeah. You need repetition. Yeah. And like, it is definitely like one of those repetitive things. Like you, I mean, the fact that like now I can take a photo and like, you know, and it's just all muscle memory now for like the settings and just everything. Like that took time. Yeah. Like your first shoot at Acura, you were like, uh, yeah, was like, like, like everything what? was coming out blurry. You're like, it never came out blurry. Yeah, I was like, ah, just put it on the green button. That'll be fine. <laughs> everything came like autofocus. Like you're like looking at the camera, like trying to autofocus. And, and I know a lot of photographers like hate autofocus, but like when you're learning, it's like, shit, just use the tools that you have. Yeah. I use autofocus. Yeah. Use the tools that you, I crank my eyes. So yeah. I, I mean, yeah, like I kind of shoot very unorthodox. Like I try not to use a tripod yeah. unless like I really, really need to. I like to be very like free flowing on the go. Right. Be able to to move fast. Yeah. And that's, that's why you said you didn't like drones because you're like, it takes too long to get up in the air. Yeah, man. To like <laughs> literally like, take out a drone, set Connect up your phone, to your phone, update it because it always oh, needs yeah. to be updated. Every time. You got to do it before DJI, you leave the house. Like, you got to do it before you leave the house. Because oh then my God. It's good. terrible. <laughs> and it's like, all right, well, cool. Like you already missed the moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, so uh, I'm like, I, I just, my camera were drones out when you started shooting or no, like, whoa. they didn't have good. Whoa. That makes me sound old. No, I'm just serious. Like 2016, they didn't have good. Um, drones no, yeah. no, I don't think so. Like a lot of the New York dudes, Chicago dudes that were getting like aerial shots were doing helicopter tours. Okay. I thought Taking better like, quality, better, better pictures. Cause they're using a camera. Exactly. Uh, because yeah, like drones, like kind of like, like, obviously like I can't get the same shot as you, but like. I could potentially fly my drone up and angle it down to almost get a similar shot now without with just being on the ground. Yeah. I mean, you can Photoshop your feet in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to do, I don't know how to use Photoshop, but yeah. Photoshop All the photos that I actually post on my Instagram are legit real 
Yeah. And they're really my feet or me like in the place. Oh like, yeah. I will say like, well, some people are like, oh, like you Photoshop shit. No. That's what I was getting like when I first started. They're like, oh, like this dude's Photoshopping himself. And I'm like, yeah. Google image and try to find this. Do you ever get a sneaker deal? Like, why don't you have a sneaker deal yet? <laughs> uh, I'm sure you used to shoot your shot. That, well, realistically, there's thousands of people. Doing it now. Yeah. Like I'm just another, I'm just another dude. Yeah. But like for us, like in St. Louis, like you were the only one there was like, I don't know if anybody else did those shots here, but I used to post those just because I thought they were cool. Like it was like, you're, you're not only getting like, you know, your Jordan ones in it, but like you're getting a blurry view to say like whatever it might be. Like it's, yeah, just, I just wanted to show. Uh, so like I was always very influenced by like New York and Chicago style photographers, mm-hmm. like people like 13th witness trash hand, uh, ill concept, you know, like those types of, those types of like photographers. And I just thought what they were doing were just absolutely mind blowing, like incredible. They had like this, these huge urban playgrounds to, to like actually like use, right? Like they had like this huge canvas at their disposal. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I don't have such a big canvas, but like I can probably do dope stuff. Yeah. You have something like you. So like I, so like I was trying to like basically, and always had the perspective of making St. Louis not look like St. Louis, but making it look like something like, Oh damn, St. Louis looks dope. Right. We should go there. And your friends like that follow you in other cities are like, damn, I didn't know like St. Louis, we could go actually go and travel and shoot there. Oh yeah. I mean like there was a time where I was having homies come in town every weekend for like two straight years from like Chicago, Detroit, like all these everywhere. Other I mean, I have there. homies from all around the world. Right. From like a camera. Mm-hmm. It, it's crazy. Yeah. It's a community and, it, and, and it's getting back to the community because like you said, you know, yesterday off camera, like we're not, building community around it like we used to and like trying to bring that back. Um, because like you said, like those friends, like you would have never been friends with those people if it wasn't for the camera. Like there's no reason that you guys yeah, would just go hang I mean, out. You guys wouldn't go hang out and go run around town. Like, yeah. So to like put it in perspective, like how things used to be like, you could like somebody's work on Instagram, message them and be like, yo man, let's link. And like, they'd be like, all right, cool. Like it was that easy. Right. Now, like, everybody's super reserved. Like, oh, what are you trying to get out of me? What do you need? Like, oh, you want spots or, like, you, you need me help to, with something. You want me to share your stuff or whatever. Right. Yeah. Like, everybody thinks that, like, people nowadays, like, want something from them because they're hitting them up. And, like, that's not really the I case. I just want to hang out. <laughs> right. Want, and, I like, that's like, why I just became, like, a homebody. I was like, well, right. fuck it. Do people do that to you now? Like, does everybody ever hit you up to go shoot? Or no. Like, younger people? <laughs> no. Uh, there, There's a few. Yeah. But, like, um... I mean, like, and it's cool to, like, have respect now and, like, actually, I would say, um, I guess, be, like, someone that people kind of, like, look up to now. It's, like, cool. Like, I wanted to, like. You looked up to people. Now you want to have people to look up to. Yeah, like, and I always, like, and now, like, for instance, like, Sadar, my buddy Trashian, who lives in uh, New York. Like, I looked up to that dude for so long. And even, like, Mike Romer, you know, like, and now, like, I'm friends with him. So it's kind of, like, it's crazy. Right. But now I'm just like, well, whatever, Mike sucks. <laughs> so it's like, it, it's easy to be like that way now. But yeah. five years ago when I'm, you know, when I was like, wow, dude, this stuff's, this dude's stuff is like incredible. Right. And now you're there and like, they're not, you know, like you're not like passing people up, but like you're there still doing it. And you're like, oh, that's what consistency does, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's one thing. I mean, I will say that photography is probably the second thing in my life that I've done the longest. Like I would say drums are obviously the other one. Right. But like I made, I've made way more money and like had way more experiences from picking up a camera than I ever did with music. Yeah. That's a little bit harder. Which is crazy. But like, um, it's just like, um, it's just a unique perspective on things. What was the, it like the first time you went to New York city, (laughs) you were probably blown away. Oh my God. I didn't want to leave. Even every time I go back, I don't want to leave. Yeah. I was there for I think like three or four days. And I was like, this sucks. Like my mind was. God, I can't get it all done in one day. You can't. It's impossible. I was like this. I was like, I actually got like sad. I was like, this sucks. When you left because you missed shots. You're like, I didn't get to go. Well, because I was just like, even the whole time I was there, I was like, God, like there's, there's only so many hours in a day. Like I would literally have to take like Adderall, <laughs> yeah. not eat. Right. I mean, and, and walk 35 miles. And like your friends were like, hey man, let's like go to get a beer. Like let's go chill out for a second. Yeah. And I'm like, like no, 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 no. I want to shoot. Yeah. And like, even like I went to New York uh, last year for nine days straight. I literally went just to go shoot purely like go do whatever I wanted to do. And I was still like, God, I need to live here for like two years and like do this every day. Yeah. It's different. And still like, I just recently went on an East coast trip there and I was like there for four days and I was like, 
not enough time. Still not enough time. What you can do in St. Louis in a week, I mean, or like what I could do in a day in New York is like a month's worth, like in St. Louis. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And I, and that's not even just photos either. That's like, even like restaurants and like, we, oh, went, we yeah. went there for three days and we were sad too, because we're like, we didn't even get to go to the Statue of Liberty because we were so <laughs> caught up at Central Park and Manhattan and all this stuff. Yeah, I know. Like you have to go, you have to go to like New York with a mindset or even like Chicago or like really any big city. Yeah. If you go with an itinerary, you'll actually be let down. Yeah. Cause you're like, oh, we missed this or we missed that. Like I've learned over the years to like, just go to cities mm-hmm. and just let whatever happens, happens. That way you're not disappointed. You're not let down and you're still like, I saw a cool show. Right. Yeah. We had some dinner reservations, but other than that, it was like, well, that's because you're married. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not married. I was about so. to say, I was about to be like, yeah, so you, gotta you, make the, you didn't go with a wife. Did you, yeah. you didn't go with a girl? Happy wife, you? happy life. So when like, you go yeah. by yourself is different. It's, it's business at that point. Like, and, and even though you're not getting paid for it, it's just like, you're going out there like literally with, with in your head, you're like, I'm going to take the dopest shit. Over, oh, absolutely. Over, over. Like I will make sure that How my many time you take in like nine days, like. Um, I think I took like 6,000, 6,000. Do you yeah. ever edit pictures? Um, like same day, like real quick. Cause you know, Never. it's dope. Never. Why? I feel like, I'm I guess that's, did you used to do that though? Um, like, so like, like, I know this picture's dope. I want to post this tonight. Like, yes. Yeah, so like I used to get hyped about that, that yeah. kind of thing. But now I'm like, it's actually a little more strategic to like kind of wait. Cause like whenever, so say like you go out and shoot something, you know, like it's going to always forever be changing. Right. So like, cool, I'm capturing this moment and this time right now. If I drop this a year from now, it's going to look super unique because everyone's got photos from it right now. Right now. Like the billboard will look different or like the screen on the Times Square will say like an old movie. You're like, oh, that movie came out a year ago. Right. So like, I like that kind of like, I appreciate that more now. Okay. But there was a time where you're like, shit, you're like on your phone, dropping it in, doing Lightroom on your phone. Like I never edit. I've actually never edited anything on my phone. Really? Never. That's crazy. Cause they got Wi-Fi now. You can just drop it straight to your phone. Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> Cause I, I've made so many presets on my laptop at home. And like, I, I get called like a serial killer because I don't have a mouse on my laptop. I do everything from the trackpad. Yeah. That is weird. So, see, I, I, I whatever. <laughs> <That's> but the- <laughs> yeah. So like I, I'm just completely like. I like to just use my hands yeah. so I don't use a mouse. It feels weird. Yeah. The, the new iPads are pretty cool because they got the iPad pros. Like you can actually like touch and move, but like that type of stuff. Is yeah. Like, I, haven't, I haven't had, I have a, I have a really souped up like MacBook pro from like the newest year. It's pretty dope. Yeah. You need them like when it comes to editing um, photos. So if you had to shoot like in any, like if you had to like live somewhere in any city, would it be New York or is there a different oh, place? Um, like if you just like, if I was like, you can only live here, you cannot travel anymore. Tokyo. Tokyo. Absolutely. You would live there? Like you like living there? Uh, I've never been there, but I already know I would like just. I thought you went to Japan or you went to I China. went to Shanghai. Oh, okay. I went to China. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought I, it, it's similar, like, like, I mean, obviously Asia, but it's, it's, I wouldn't say they're the same, but like, they're pretty similar. Shanghai, like Tokyo is more of like that New York. And then Shanghai might be like more of the like lights, the bustle, the red, like the, the, mm-hmm. whatever they're called, like the houses with all like the red, like clay tiles and like, yeah, all that stuff. I mean, Shanghai. So I went to Shanghai for like, 10 days, nine days. And like, I was like, God, like, I just hope that I lose everything. So I have to stay here. <laughs> like I hate, actually, I love St. Louis so much, but I hate coming back. Cause I'm like, well, this sucks. My trip's over. Right. Back to my boring drink coffee in the morning, wake up when I want to wake up and like go walk around the same 16 square blocks. Yeah. Cool. You need to shoot in South city, man. I go around. I get around. I haven't seen anything you posted. You, like South City, the buildings aren't tall enough or what? Mm. Like I feel like some old, like the hill, South City, like some, some classic stuff. Uh, so like there used to be a really, really dope factory in South, like right over by the hill where they actually just built that new development by the Kings Highway Bridge. Whenever they redid oh, the all new, that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the pet food factory. Yeah, yeah. But like now all that stuff, everything's always forever changing now. Right. Like abandoned buildings are kind of, um, I mean, obviously new stuff's always popping up, but like the real rustic, dirty, like... Mm-hmm real decay. Yeah. I think like that generation's finally kind of getting like cleaned up. Yeah. New stuff's coming. Yeah. So everything's yeah. like, you know, drop ceilings now. And well, like, even like the armory, like the armory building used to be like a huge open. Now it's like, a, Oh it's yeah. It's going to be like a new ballpark built. It's just like a new like place for people to drink and yeah. And like play games. And I have photos from that place from like 2017. Like, yeah. God, I remember like trying to break into that place for like two weeks. Couldn't get in. And just like, like, damn, this fucking thing sucks. Like, why is it so like, and I'm like, well, duh, it's an armory. Like it's right. obviously not meant to be broken into. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, we like tried to like climb the billboard next to it and like hop over. Like we did all kinds of crazy shit to get in there. 
Yeah, that's that's wild. So um, I got a couple questions about photos. So if you had to take a photo of someone like portrait wise, is there somebody that you want to shoot? Like it, it, it could be dead or alive. You know, is that too hard? No, 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 no. I've definitely Both. thought about like. Uh, like historic, like portraits and stuff I've wanted to take. Um, could be both like somebody dead, like a classic person you could take a photo of. And then maybe somebody like modern day that like would be super dope if like you went and took photos of them. I would actually really like to take a photo of Mike Tyson. Yeah. Like right now currently. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it would just be like, I think he would just have like a lot of like cool, interesting stories. Yeah. And I would always, I would really like to take a photo of a president. It doesn't matter what president, but like to say like on my resume, they're like, like Barack, I think Barack would be like so swaggy and so yeah. dope. And you could make it look crazy. Like it would be. Oh like, my God. Yeah. yeah like uh, Barack it would, on the basketball court with his suit, like oh. with the basketball would be crazy. Like on like a gold, like basketball court in inner city, Chicago. Like that would be fucking crazy. Yeah. I would basically try to like make Barack look like old Michael Jordan Nike ads. Yeah. Like a complex ad or like It'd a complex so magazine sick. cover. So yeah. Barack and Mike Tyson, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, that's cool. You could probably make that happen. Mike Tyson seems like he gets out there a lot. Like he does a lot of podcasts. So I think he's pretty open to like. Um, yeah. And Gary V actually. I would, I would really like to meet Gary V. Shit, you could run around. He probably needs another content guy. <laughs> uh, well, he's so always... Drift is homies with him. Oh, really? Uh, he's open to forever. Like, he's down for supporting anybody, it seems like. Well, maybe, maybe not now, but it used to be. Like... Um, yeah, because, like, when all the NFT stuff was popping off, Drift, like, got into it pretty early. So, like, yeah. that's what happened with all that. Yeah. Oh, but... you dropped an NFT project, didn't you? Yeah, it didn't do so well. Did it not? <laughs> it's just because there's so many people like me doing it. Well, it's photography. Like, I feel like, like the, the graphic, allure, yeah. like, went away. Unless you don't have a big following, like, you're going to get lost. Yeah, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jake Paul, or Logan Paul did one with, like, Polaroids. But that's because he's huge. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, well, yeah, if I had 10 million followers, I could sell anything. He was selling Polaroids for, like, $50,000 and stuff. That's what I'm saying. But uh, the pictures were dope. It, it was, like, called Jays on Jays on My Feet or Jays on the Street or something like that. What was it called? Uh, Jays for Days. Jays for Days. Um, but, yeah, it's hard. I sold you know, one. Did you? I mean, well, that's success then. It was eleven hundred dollars. I was like, all right, cool. Like and the person still owns it. Uh, no, I think he sold it. Shout out to Mason. Mason <laughs> sold it. <laughs> did, he, did he take a loss on it, or did he? Uh, I don't know. Actually, he probably did. <laughs> he probably did. NFTs. Well, he, he he supported. So I mean, it's, it's a start. I understand them, but I like Gary V's because he's selling the NFT, but it also comes with an experience. Yeah, see, like if I had like an experience to offer, like. I'm just a really boring dude. Like I don't have anything to offer. They're like, come walk around with me today. They're like, well, I don't know. Like I can, Gary V was like, if you bought this one, you could like go sit with him for eight hours. And like, yeah, the amount of money, the the amount of stuff you would learn in that eight hours. Yeah. Nobody wants to sit with me for two hours, let alone (laughs) eight. And like, and they're not going to pay for it. That's right. I'm sure. Right. Were you kind of bummed? Like when you, when that didn't work, like, I mean, tell it like, I'm sure you get like that feeling of like, why is this not working? Or Um, no, I know exactly why it's not working. I know the market's completely oversaturated. I'm a very real, like realist person. So like when shit doesn't work, I know exactly why it didn't work. I'm like, well, cause there's 10,000 other people doing it. Mm -hmm. What would make me stand out? Right. But like, that's like my mindset. I'm like, I don't play the game. I'm not going to make reels. Like I'm not going to like make a discord channel and stuff like that. I yeah. don't care. Yeah. Like I don't hashtag anything anymore. I don't tag people in my photos. Like yeah. fuck it, man. If you see it, you see it. If not, Oh, well maybe you'll catch the next one. It's still pretty badass though that you did it. And and that's like what I do is like, we've done a lot of things that lost and it not lost money, but like we've done a lot of things that like I thought was going to work and it was going to pop off and Absolutely. it doesn't, but it's like we did it. So it's like, we yeah, always, you can always say that you back, like when NFTs probably go away, like, I don't know if they're going to go away or not, but like you could be like, Oh, I used to, I had a collection and oh, yeah, you I remember pull it up back in my time. Kids, if you have kids or whatever, like you could pull that up and be like, Oh, I was an NFT. I had an NFT and you're, you know, your little son or whatever be like that's crazy my dad had an nft right. collection oh my god he made them back yeah. in like 2020 that's crazy <laughs> yeah and it'd be like archives but you know i i like looked into it and i was just like i don't know man like obviously there's you can make money with anything but like same with cryptocurrency it's like there's something about the ways that things have always been and like the stock market is always going up or it's always working luke i'm telling you man on the record i'll say this if i ever get too broke I'm starting a feet finder account. I have no problem with that. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, for real. Damn. There's ways to make money. No, there is. There always is. If, if you really want to hustle, I mean, like, so there was a time in my photography career, probably like even like during COVID, like I was sending 20 emails a day mm-hmm. to companies. Hey, man, do you need work? Hey, man, do you need work? And I realized that like it wasn't getting me anywhere and I was wasting a lot of energy on it. And just like with relationships or like whenever you lose your wallet, you know, like whenever like you don't expect things to work out, they always work out. Yeah. Like when I was always down to like my last like little portion of like my mental capacity to be like, God, like, do I want to keep pushing forward? Mm-hmm. Something great would happen and push me forward. Mm-hmm. 
like every time when I was like, God, like I just want to quit. Like why you were, like, am I doing this? Open jobs. You were like looking on like Indeed or whatever. Like for yeah, I was like, man, like do I want to go back to first form? Like yeah. do I want to be the laughing stock and be like, ha ha? Well, clearly you didn't make it, dude. So like that's why you're back here, right? And I was just like, something would happen. Like when I least expected it, I'd get an email. Hey man, we want to buy like $10,000 worth of stuff from you. And I'd be like, well shit. We'll do it. And then that would keep you floating. And then now it's getting bigger and bigger to where it's like, okay, now I can do a job in August and then make that last. You know? Exactly. And like, I already have like stuff coming up for like March, mm-hmm. you know, of next year with like the scout guide and stuff with like yeah. Joan Fisher. How'd you learn the that. business of it though? Because like nobody, like nobody taught you. It's not like you had a business before it. So it's like, how did you learn the business of how to even write a proposal and how to even properly like um, sell yourself? Like, cause that's the hard, I think creators are really bad at selling themselves. Um, I wanted to always make sure that I wasn't the biggest and best in the room I was in. Mm-hmm. And then if I was like the top dog in the room, I found a bigger room. Right. It's like, that was just like my mindset. Like I would look out, I would like reach out to people who were on the path or had already gone down the path that I was trying to go down and literally ask them for advice. Hey man, whenever two years ago, when you were probably around my skill level, what were your prices? And they would be like, Oh, I have an old proposal. Like here's a proposal. You can like take stuff and like make, Yeah, man, I asked so many questions. I was like, so bothersome to people. Yeah. like annoying, like yeah. a bug. And I was like, cause I wanted to retain information. Right. And I didn't want to do it off of YouTube. Cause I wanted people to give me real life, real time info. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to look at some random dude that I have no ties to. And I don't trust. Right. I was reaching out to people that I actually trusted it and knew. Yeah. And taking their advice. Do you have a mentor still or no? Not really. Um, <clears throat> so I've like, I've definitely like looked up to people and I still look up to people and I still like reach out to a few people. Um, there's really, really good photographer, uh, Sig in Atlanta. He's like, uh, he does like all the bike life stuff. He's like really kind of, um, like just blew that whole area up. Uh, there's trash yeah. Sadar. Um, there was Damon Meek at white box. Like yeah. they he's, took, he's crazy. He does. They good. took me under their wing. Like I helped him out with, uh, I like assisted him for like the Nelly photo shoot, like with the yeah. Budweiser cans and like mm-hmm. just really, really cool, crazy opportunities. And I like tried to soak up as much as I could from that stuff. Yeah. You're like, I just want to be here. I just want to watch you work. Yeah. And even yeah. like shooting around just like someone who's like different. Like when I would go, like I learned how to do black and white photos and like edit black and white photos from like an Atlanta trip, like being around my buddy who's really good at it. Yeah. It's not just throwing a black. And, and I was just like, yo, like how, like, what is your process? I wasn't just like, yo, give me the preset. I was like, yo, actually teach me what right. you're doing. And also give me the preset too. <laughs> uh, he gave it to me, but uh, yeah, and also throw me that preset. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, and then it's all like situational too. Yep. You know, like lighting, like you and I could take the same photo in the same room with the same lighting, but it's going to look different. Right. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't matter. Right. Like I could tell you whatever settings I could literally set up everything, mm-hmm. but you're not going to edit the same way I edit, or you're not going to focus in the same area I focus in. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, that's real. And, uh, but that's, that's smart. Like you have to be a sponge and like, that's something that some people have to get, uh, get, uh, um, over is like, why are you not asking people questions? Like if I have, like, I'm starting to get into photography more, like I'm just going to text you and be like, Hey, do you want to go out and shoot? You know, like yeah. just so I can learn you, because you have to make yourself very vulnerable. And yeah. a lot of people like when you're uncomfortable, that's when you know you're learning. Yeah. And like, and I'm guilty of it too. I get so uncomfortable sometimes where I'm like, all right, cool. Shut down time out. Yeah. Disconnect. Um, I mean, honestly, like I'm scared. Like that's why I haven't started video. Cause I'm like, I know I'm going to fuck up a lot. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm really, really good at photography. And I'm like, well, people probably aren't going to like my video work. They're just going to know me for photography. And I don't have the patience to like learn it right now. Right. And you don't want to put out bad work, you know? Yeah. Or you don't want to like, if somebody pays you, you put out bad work and then it's like, oh, now it's like, oh, well, this dude's unreliable. He sucks. Right. So I'm like, well, just stick to what you're good at and, and you could still work on it, but just like work on it on your own until you're ready to actually charge for it or w- whatever it might be. But yeah, I, I typically try to stay in my own lane when it comes to stuff. Video is the future though. I think video is important um, to an extent, but like if you're just a photographer, like a lot of places just need photographers, like a lot of like big fashion brands, like big, like they just need like good photos and yeah, but then there's also a video element to it. I don't know if there's a benefit to doing both. I don't know if anybody does both amazing. Like some people are really good at video video and they can do some decent photos. And, um, a lot of my buddies out in Denver, uh, like Frankie Lee, mm-hmm. Jack Fitz, the guy who did the video yeah. for the Shanghai stuff. Yeah, the documentary. Um, he is colorblind, which is crazy. Wow. And he color grades everything and actually takes really, really good photos too. So it's like, they're, they are out there. Yeah. And they're able to make, they're able to run a nice business because they, they're versatile. You know? And yeah. like, that's the, the thing. Have you ever ran into it like 
you know, with street photographers with like brands being like, I don't really want this guy working with me because like you take photo, like you don't like your feed doesn't like, if I went to your feed and I needed photos of a beer can in a white box in a white room, like why yeah. would I go to you? Because I'm like, I don't know if he does that. Like, um, you ever had people like that? They're like, can you even do this? And you have to like send them stuff. So I, I get, I get a lot of questions. I'm like, I have a website and everything, but like there is, it's almost hard to like decipher like a lot of people's work. Mm-hmm. So typically if someone like reaches out to me, I give them a very honest answer. Like the very first time I shot for feast magazine here in St. Louis, I'd never shot food and I was very transparent with them. I was like, yo, I don't know why you guys are picking me. (laughs) Right. I'll be real honest, but, um, I don't shoot food. You're like, I don't know how to stage it. I don't know how to make it look like somebody ate out of a place. And luckily the, the girl at feast was super, super nice. I, I I think her name was like Alex or Alexis. Mm Mm-hmm. I forgot. Sorry. Um, but she was like, Oh, don't worry. Like I'll help you with everything. Like we just really, really like your style. We would like your perspective on it. So I think like realistically to answer your question, if someone was reaching out to me that I didn't shoot this kind of stuff before, it's because you're getting my perspective on it. Right. No matter how unique, but there is like, if I'm taking a job, it's because I have confidence that I'm going to do it. So like, that's just how it it is. Yeah, exactly. Like I will figure it the fuck out. But you probably could. And like, this might just be me like just inferring, but like if you made it, if you really just wanted to do a business of your photography, like if your, your second try was like second try productions and like you just put all your business stuff on there, you probably would get more business out of it Um, potentially, but it wouldn't be that out. It wouldn't be as fun for you anymore because um, it'd be like, it'd all just be business focused. Yeah. Cause like at the end of the day for me, like I want to work with other brands. Like I want to work with people in St. Louis. I want to work with like people in New York. I want to like work with people that want to work with me. Mm -hmm that like see something in my work where they're like, okay, cool. Like this will mesh well. Right. And like half the time, um, like with the soccer team stuff, like for the Adidas collab, I was absolutely terrified. Like I was like, Oh, broad daylight kryptonite. This is going to suck. Mm-hmm. Freaked out the whole time. And the photos turned out incredible. Yeah. So it's like, it's that uncomfortable balance of like, I had, I had enough confidence to obviously do it, but I second guess myself the whole time. Like that's oh. like completely normal. Oh, that's way normal. Like, and I think a lot of people don't like, they don't want to be transparent about that. Like, oh, of course I knew I was going to get it. Hell no. I was terrified the whole time. Right. Even when they said yes. And like the day came that morning, you're probably like, shit. Yeah, I was like, I was like, oh shit. Like this is going to suck. <laughs> I was like, I charged them all this money. And I was like, well, this is like, let's hope, hope it works out. Right. You know, like here we are. Yeah. And like, that's happened a lot with stuff. You know, it's just one of those things to where, um, I mean, hell, I'll try anything once. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if yeah. there's a budget. Yeah, if there's a budget, then you might like it. You're like, I might like shooting this. And that's why I tell, like, just have an open mind about stuff. And like, yeah, like with portrait work, like studio work, like I, before I started working at white box, like I'd never, um, I'd never done like portrait work. And I was like, oh, like, how am I going to do this? Right. But I made myself very uncomfortable and like, was like, all right, cool. Like I'm going to force myself to get better at this. Absolutely. So it's like, if, if you want it, you can go get it. 100% dude. That's I don't want video. That's why I'm not going to get it. Yeah. Not yet. I'll, I'll that. <laughs> You'll get there. Maybe. I don't know. You might, maybe not. There's a lot of I people hope that don't. Not. Yeah. Video is a different animal. It's a nightmare. Yeah. If you don't like edit, like you said, you don't edit, like you edit obviously your photos, but like you're not like that intense, like Photoshop editor, like the Lightroom, like you're in Lightroom, like taking 45 minutes on one photo. Like, no, 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 no. no. But like that's what it takes for video. Like you're not just going to throw a video together the way you throw a photo together. Yeah. Like, no, I'm just, like, you can't take the video right because you have to shoot it in a certain way to where it doesn't, it looks completely di- like when he shows this raw, it's completely different. Yeah. And, looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Everything like looks gray. like shit until he, until you put the magical <laughs> look, touch on it. Yeah. Sprinkle a little fairy dust on there. Isn't make us right? look good. It all I'm getting a little like pale shit. too, bro. You gotta, you gotta color grade me. Give me a little tan. Can you make you know, me not look as red? <laughs> Thanks. Um, but yeah, man, it's the STL bucket list show. So typically we, we like to talk to people about St. Louis and, uh, some spots that you like to go to. So, um, obviously you walked everywhere in the city, but like, I'm sure you've ate at some places and like visited some places. Like oh. tell us about some bucket list spots that like, okay, if people are coming in. So let's say somebody's coming in town to shoot with you. What places you're hitting up some food spots for sure. Uh, so best pizza place. I don't care what you guys say. La pizza. La pizza. Okay. La pizza. Ah, uh, cause I love Brooklyn style. So like, I love okay. like New York style. Pizza, La Pizza, hands down. And that's because of Graham, Kilogram. Yeah. He took me there one time and I was like, I've been sold ever since. I got and, to get you a spot. Pizza Champ is this new spot in Maplewood. They do. They do and like, Farachi's and Florissant. Farachi's is fire. Very underrated. Yeah. Nobody 
if you know, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, my mom and them grew up in Ferguson, and they we we always get the half baked one. You get the half baked one, take it home and finish. And Ferrachi's bake the rest of it. is yeah. fire. Yeah, um, I'm a big Thai food guy, so like, um, I go to Sentai a lot downtown. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a go to for sure. Um, I go to Blondie's a lot, obviously, because it's my block mm-hmm. for like brunch for breakfast. Yeah. Um. I don't really eat out a lot though. Like I like cook at home a lot. What what if you had to go like what's a day night spot? What's like a like a nice dinner? Like if you Oh like Louis. Oh yeah. Louis. Yeah, Louis fire. Because I can wear all black and it still looks nice. Yeah. It's I don't put a, I don't put forth a lot of effort into dating yeah. or like dressing up. Like yeah. I mean like I you guys can't obviously see everything, but I have on Well if they're watching on YouTube, but yeah, he's wearing all black and shorts and I have on slides and <laughs> Adidas socks. This is pretty much Unfortunately, dressed up. <laughs> is there ever a moment when you're going to shoot where you're like, damn, I got to dress up a little bit for the shoot, or is it, it doesn't really matter? Um, I think it's like, w- like we, for a certain client where you're like, oh, I'm going to actually wear it. Like- artists are kind of like in the weird perspective of like, I don't have to dress like this to like be an artist and like right. be good at what I do. Right. It's like being a DJ. Yeah. Or like being a musician. Yeah. You just wear what makes you feel good. You if, if, yourself. if you feel comfortable and like you feel confident, it's going to show in your work. Right. So I've never had like someone be like, oh, well, here's a dress code or like a shoot. If it was a wedding, it's a whole different story. Like you have to wear like black pants to fit. I've yeah. never shot a wedding though. Yeah. I never will. Yeah. So don't hit me up. Don't <laughs> ask me to shoot your wedding. I'm not doing it. <laughs> that's, Clip that because I'm not shooting your wedding. <laughs> that's funny. Don't ask. No, I'm not taking weddings. your baby We're photos. No baby photos. No dog taking, photos. I'll, I'll, I'll fuck with dogs, but I'm not taking <laughs> photos of your baby. I'm not taking photos. Of the uh, maternity the- of your kids, <laughs> only like homies and homies, like <laughs> throw your price out there. I do not care. Not doing it. <laughs> no. Hey, do what you do. What you feel. It man. makes me feel awkward. I'm actually not like a people person. So mm-hmm. for like me to randomly be like, oh, hi, welcome to my studio. Like, yeah. Here, oh, you guys daughter. are a family. Yeah. What do you guys want? Right. They're clueless. They don't know what they want. Yeah, like I don't know what they some want. Pictures from Pinterest. Like, can you do? You know, like I, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, we've all we've all done the Pinterest scroll, but yeah, I don't want to if I don't have to. Yeah. I want to work with brands that want to give me full creative freedom. Yeah, and trust me. Right. The soccer team. I will say this: they trusted me. Mm-hmm. They had faith in me. They believed in me, and they're like, "We know that what you're going to do is going to be dope. Yeah. Do what feels right for you." And then that gives you the canvas to like make what you want. And I do that with all the people we hire is like, I don't want to micromanage anything because like that, that limits the product that we're going to get right. the product. And then it, if I tell you like, Hey, don't do this. Then immediately you're like, okay, well that limits me. And now I'm like going to dumb my work down and it's not going to, you right. could have paid somebody else to do Yeah, it. You, you want cookie cutter photos, go find a cookie cutter photographer, but yeah. it's not me. There's a lot of them. And there's a lot of people. And, and you know, like you said, it's just like people are hiring you. And that's what I'm saying. Like if I'm paying somebody to do something, it's like, if somebody's doing my bathroom, it's like, I'm paying them to do my bathroom. Let them right. do the bathroom. You right. know, like obviously pick your stuff that you want, but yeah. it's like, it's don't like stand in there and watch them. Whenever you're, whenever you go to a restaurant and yeah. you order food, you're not going to the kitchen and watching them work. Right. You just trust them. Yeah, they trust that it's going to be good. So, like, you should do the same thing with your photographers. <laughs> trust us. I promise you. We got you. <laughs> you don't know it looks good. We do. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's the real thing, though. Like, people don't know what looks good to them until you you show them. Yeah. That's happened so many times. Like, from friends of friends that I know, they're just like, these big companies, these big brands have, like, all this creative direction. They have all these layouts of stuff and then go figure that like they don't like any of that stuff when the end of the day comes around and they're like, Oh, we like all the stuff that you just did on the fly. Right. That happens nine out of 10 times, Mm -hmm. but they had like a whole consultant team come in to like stage everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it happened with the soccer team. It happened with the soccer team a few times. It's just like, I understand that like that's their job and like they have like limitate, they have like boundaries, guidelines to to hit. Yeah. Yeah. They have guidelines that they need to hit, but it's like, Sometimes you should just let the creative be creative. Mm-hmm. I agree. So it's like, let the know. creative be creative. That's my, maybe what we named the episode. I don't know. Could I, I'm just also stubborn. So like <laughs> I'm very sad in my ways. Yeah. Well, man, I appreciate you coming on. Um, I wanted to leave with one thing of something that you could tell a younger photographer or just a younger person that's interested in doing something like photography or something to be creative. Like, is there any advice that like, okay, I'm 21 years old or I'm 18 years old and I like send you a message. Like, are you going to, re- you're replying to that message and giving them some words. Like what, yeah. what type uh, of stuff would you say to somebody like that? So I think if like it came down to it of like someone asking like, Hey man, like I want to get better. Like, how did you get to where you are? You know, like those types of questions. 
I would give them the same advice that was given to me uh, by Graham. Um, he said, get two or three of your homies. And I would say this to them, get two or three of your homies that are passionate about what you're doing, just like you are and shoot every day, shoot as much as you can get your reps in. Like your mind will grow just like your body will. If you go to the gym, but like you have to be consistent. Like you, if you really, really want this, you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose people in your life. You're going to make sacrifices. And I think not enough people actually like keep it that real and say that, but like there, there's been plenty of shit in my life that I've lost because of this camera. Mm -hmm. There's been plenty of things that I've gained, but like at the end of the day, that was like the best advice that I got. Like get two or three of your friends. If you love what you do, go out and do it. If it's playing music, if it's being creative with a camera, if it's, Playing sports, you know, business or whatever. Yeah. Being a test champ, like whatever the hell it is you want to do, like you need accountability and like doing it alone is just tough. Mm -hmm. Like you can learn a lot from YouTube, but like real world scenarios are going to trump everything. Right. So like you said, I like the thing that you mentioned about like learning it. And like, I, I had that problem in my business. So like I try to do everything on my own. Cause I thought like, I want this all on my own. Like I want to create everything on my own. And then yeah, it's like, you're prideful and you're you have like nobody to celebrate with either. Like of like, you can't like show them like, Hey, look at this. Or like, yeah. you know, like, Hey, look at this like accomplishment we hit, you know? And like, yeah. Like when, when unfortunately, like when good things happen nowadays, it's like, and I don't know if it's like a St. Louis thing or not, but like no one like really stands up and like claps in the room. They're kind of like, Oh shit. It's a, that's another thing with pride. It's like, if you don't, and Andy Frasilla says this and you, you had mentioned like, if you don't like to see other people win, then you will always lose. Yeah. Because your, your mind's telling you that you don't want to win when you don't like other people. Like if you get a huge job with Adidas and like, I'm jealous and I'm, I should be like, that's awesome. That's like a big job for our city that will elevate us to the next job. Absolutely. You like know? I've talked for so long about like wanting to bring like big brands here. Like mm -hmm. Apple's never done a commercial here. Right. Nike's never done an ad here. Right. Like why? Mm -hmm. We have plenty of creatives here, mm -hmm. like plenty of potential. We have a blank canvas. If Nike wanted to come here or some, whatever brand it was, come here, the city would flip over 10 times fold to be like. We'd all show up for like extras. Everybody could, would be extras in the ad and everything. You could literally close down the city because it's pretty much already closed. Yeah. Like it, it's not going to take much. Right. Like you can have the free roam to whatever it is you want to do in this city. No matter what day it is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Tuesday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Great. City's dead. You can literally film all day if you want. Right. So I just, I don't understand that perspective. There was something, there was a, and I'll tell you off air, but there was like an agency, government agency here locally that like hired people from out of town and like a bunch of people were mad about it. Like they're like, why would you, why would you as a St. Louis like government agency, like hire creatives out of town to come do a project that's like St. Louis based, you know? When like, we literally all live here. Well, that's what I'm saying. You all live here. You probably would have got it done cheaper, you know, you pr not even cheaper, but you it doesn't matter if it was cheaper. Like it, even if it's the same exact price, it's different. It's, it's just a pride thing. Yeah. So like, for instance, uh, I'll make it quick. So like Detroit, like very similar to St. Louis, but Detroit has pride. Yeah. They are proud to be from Detroit. They are proud to live in Detroit. They are proud. They have civic pride. They're like to do things in Detroit and keep things local. And there's parts of Detroit where you're like, why are you proud of this? <laughs> but it's theirs. Yeah. You know, like, I'm proud to live in St. Louis. I've, I'm born and raised here. I've lived here all my life. And I think that like boils down to like kind of why I'm not leaving. Mm -hmm. Cause like I have stuff to do. Yeah. I want to show, I want to showcase St. Louis on a global scale mm -hmm. for good or bad. I just want to showcase it for what it is right. and let people decipher on what they want. Mm -hmm. You can look at this abandoned building and think it's beautiful or you can think it's shit and run down. Right. That's all your perspective. I'm just here to showcase it. So at the end of the day, like, that's really all I want to do. Make a little money on the side, yeah. be happy, work for myself. And like, that's pretty easy. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's doable. And you're doing it right now. So yeah. there's going to be a lot of people that listen and like, you know, are going to reach out. Like we, uh, we have a tight following, but it, it's the same thing that you said, like hundred thousand people follow us, certain amount listen. Like there's those loyal people that are going to listen to everyone. And it's probably my mom and dad. And, if you want to, dad, if, you, if you want to work, <laughs> if you want to work with me, just reach out. Yeah. It's that um, easy. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll put the, his website, we'll put uh, the Instagram link and everything like that. But guys start supporting like local creatives and artists. Like it doesn't have to be a video for you guys to like it. Um, photography is definitely still cool and it's definitely still relevant. So um, half coast studio, shout out Matt in the back, cutting up a great episode.
Um, really, he's here every week <laughs> and uh, flexible, um, able to put out a nice 1080p episode right out onto YouTube if you guys are watching. Um, if you guys are listening, Spotify, Google, Apple, um, all of them, there's like 20. I, I don't even know what, what all of them they're on. Um, and then Regional Arts Commission of St. Louis really allowing us um, to create this product because, as you know, um, it is not cheap to create content. Um, so we were able to make this happen and uh, put this podcast out, and we'll see you guys uh, next Wednesday. Today they rep St. Louis, yeah. They rep St. Louis. They rep St. Louis.